Welcome to the channel friends. So today's project in the workshop will be a continuation of my part one and part two on the Honda HSS Teflon shoot upgrade. And uh, essentially this will be part three and it will be covering the new improvements I've done on my old design. Now I took the old design and I've tweaked it a little bit and I think I've come up with something that really complements the Honda HSS snowblower very well. So if you're not familiar with the condition I'm talking about, the reason why I made this shoot collar slash deflector or guard, whatever you want to call it, uh, is because once you remove the, uh, the factory collar that's located at the bottom of the chute on the HSS model, in particular the 1332 ATD like I have, I've removed that collar, but once you do that, you end up with some blow-by at 3 and 4 o'clock when you have the chute rotated towards kind of the operator. So that collar was pretty much kind of deflecting some of the snow back up into the chute that way it wasn't uh, going stray. So once you open that up, the machine does not clog, which is really rare. Um, some people have uh, kind of issues with that, but I've never had an issue really. I just removed it for the peace of mind because my previous Honda snowblower uh, never had that, which was a, a 1332 TAS model. So. This video is going to cover the new improvements I've done and I'll show you guys kind of what it looks like and um, hopefully how it performs if I get some snow here very shortly. So if this is something that's going to interest you, stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the video. So welcome back. Here is my HSS 1332 ATD and as you can see there it still has the older design uh, Teflon chute. Now it's attached to the machine with eight stainless steel nut and bolts and it has a nice relief here, relief cut in the deflector to allow for anything that builds up here to flow out of the machine. Now this works really well uh, but it is a little bit too tall. So on my new design, I shortened this and I made it wider. The reason for that is because you don't need it when it's rotated in this direction, but as soon as you kind of rotate towards the cowling and towards the light, it will kind of still blow by the light. So I had to come down with that opening in order to contain more of that discharge and snow and blow back to get, uh, you know, back into the chute. So that's the new design. I'll show you in just a second up close. And I changed the material as well. I went with a thicker material and it's also made out of HDPE instead. So I'll just give you guys a nice quick look. Both sides. So I do have videos of my part one and part two of this collar design. I will link that up above on the video, so check those out. That way you can see how this kind of performs. Uh, but the new design, like I said, is gonna be a shorter opening and a wider opening uh, to compensate for the hood and to keep everything contained. So as you, we look over here, we had, that's my next video. I will be taking care of the surging problem with the motor. So I have four jets here. I'm going to incrementally change out the main jets and see how it stops the surging of the motor, which uh, most of you guys, if you have a 1332 ATD, are very familiar with. So that's coming up soon. I'm gonna fix that surging because it's driving me absolutely nuts when I run the machine, and it just doesn't need to, uh, to do that. So not only will the machine run smoother, it'll also get more power by changing out that main jet, which will be great because it'll make the Honda HSS even more of a beast. So moving on, let's get into the new design here. And uh, this is it. This is my template that I started with. Then I worked over to this template. And then this is the finished kind of layout here on the design. One side is shiny. One side has a textured finish, which will be the outside of the chute deflector. And uh, I made it of a thicker material. And also this is HDPE, which is more durable. Uh, when it comes to uh, lower temperature and it looks better because it is black and matches the Honda color scheme black and red so 
really happy with the way it looks and uh, it's a matter now to you know bolt it up to the machine and try it out I went ahead and did all my cutting my trimming and, and finishing work uh, but essentially that's what I'm dealing with and I have a smaller opening now and it's wider at the base so just like the other one I have to go ahead and kind of bend over the flange area here a little bit and I'm gonna have to heat this up with like a heat gun so it forms that radius and kind of that profile and curvature of the chute for the Honda you can't just take it the way you see it here and kind of bolt it up because you're gonna stress the material out so I have to go ahead with a handbrake and kind of bend this over first before I install it on the chute so as you can see we'll go and kind of compare the opening size so as you can see it's not as tall but it is a little bit wider and also the bottom here is reinforced versus this which is not um, this right here just falls inside that rotating ring assembly and uh, as you can see there it's kind of tearing apart because of the velocity of all the debris and snow uh, so my improvement on that is now including a one-piece design which will be mounted to the exterior of the ring which I'll show you just coming up uh, once I get into the installation but essentially I will be putting this on the outside so it's not going to come in contact uh, with anything from the inside there and it should last a lot longer and be more durable these little tabs here on the side will clamp on to the inside of here in between the black part and the red of the chute so that there should give it more strength and uh, allow it to last much longer uh, versus this one here which is you know Teflon and it's kind of a soft material uh, which can't really handle up to you know cold temperatures that well uh, especially the way I had it mounted so with this new design it should solve all of that and um, I can't wait to see how it looks So with that being said guys uh, if you have the collar removed from your HSS 1332 uh, and you're interested in purchasing this new design shoot deflector from me send me an email I will uh, make a list of everybody interested and then I'll go ahead and make a big batch of these and uh, offer them for sale uh, you will get it just like this nothing else you will have to go ahead and drill the holes in your chute and uh, I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna offer it with hardware I might leave that up to you guys but I think this will be a hit um, it's a great design it's very functional and it looks good too especially now with the HDPE in black so if you guys are interested let me know I will uh, keep you guys posted obviously and uh, I might offer it on eBay as well so we'll see what happens but you will have to drill your own holes in your chute which isn't a big deal all you have to do is line it up clamp the collar in place top and bottom and then go ahead and mark off your holes and then drill them very simple so let's get into the disassembly of this one here which is the older model and uh, let me put on my brand new HDPE collar chute deflector guard shield whatever you want to call it <laughs> so let's get to that and let's get busy all right so here is the deflector all bent up and formed to the profile of the chute uh, I did have to go ahead and remove the bottom piece here which was right here uh, with the bandsaw and then finish that off so it would, would actually line up better with the holes this right here was preventing the bolt pattern from lining up and um, was causing an issue because it wouldn't allow it to stretch over so this is the actual final chute design it's open on the bottom which is okay because uh, it just allows for more clearance uh, and less stuff to build up along the bottom here so I had to cut that out that's uh, just part of the uh, you know trial and error type deal when you, you're doing stuff so I'm really happy with this I went ahead and, and bent it so it fits perfectly in there and everything lines up I did a dry fit already and it lines up just fine uh, I bent everything up with a handbrake just like this along the flange where it mounts you have to bend that up just a little bit so it doesn't stress the material too much when you go ahead and bolt it down so you got to give it a, a slight bend 
and it's good to go. So that right there is the completed design. This was the previous Teflon shoot deflector, which ended up tearing, as you can see there, uh, because it was tucked in on the inside of that rotator ring versus now that this is going to be tucked in on the outside. So we'll not have that issue, and it should be a lot more durable. Uh, that's the template, and pretty much I use the heat gun to form kind of the curvature of the shoot deflector and to bend over the flanges. That way it wouldn't stress the material out and softened it so it was allowed to be worked. So now it's time to go ahead and put this on the snowblower and show you what I, what I did to make it fit. Now these holes here are 300 thousandths away from this edge, all the way down. So I have four on each side, 300 thousandths in, and I use the existing holes for the, uh, the rotator ring at the bottom of the chute. So I did go ahead with the handbrake and bend this area in just a little bit so it would squeeze this in just like that so the sides were more parallel than they were. Uh, before, they were kind of pushed outwards here on this corner same thing on here. They were kind of spread, uh, which was kind of, you know, not stressing the material out on the new chute, uh, but it was kind of pulling it tight on that area. So just squeeze that in. I bent it with the handbrake and that did the job. And now, as you can see, it's a lot more parallel than it was. So whenever you're doing modifications on your machinery, it's always going to, you know, require some kind of uh, fitting and, you know, massaging of different components and uh, squeezing and stretching and this and that uh, to get things to fit. So it's all part of the game, uh, but I'm really happy with this uh, shoot deflector. It's gonna be a great drop-in kit. Uh, so now it's time to go ahead and install it on the machine and show you guys what it looks like. So one thing I wanna to touch on before I go ahead and assemble the shoot deflector on the machine is the hardware I'm using. I'm using this uh, 1032 half inch long stainless steel hardware and I have two washers for each nut and bolt. So one's going to go on the inside, one's going to go on the outside. It's going to protect the paint and uh, you know just protect the finish on the snow blower that way it's not gouging into the paint and uh, exposing bare metal which can lead to potential rust down the road. If you leave the machine outside uh, that will happen. I leave my machine inside the garage all year long so I don't have that issue. But still, stainless steel hardware is a good choice, and uh, the washers are nylon. And uh, now it's time to go ahead and install the shoot deflector, as you see it here, on my machine, and show you guys what that process looks like. All right, so here is the finished product, and this is what it looks like, all bolted up and tightened down. As you can see, the nylon washers do a good job at protecting the paint, and it gives it a really nice professional looking finish. The bottom here has a larger opening because now this is it's kind of stretched so it can actually be um, aligned and properly cinched down with the bolts. Uh, this here, that piece that I removed uh, was preventing it from stretching and going into the proper positions. So that's actually a good thing because now we have a larger opening here uh, which allows you to uh, remove debris with your tool, not your hand, 
uh, in the event something gets stuck. So you can still get access to that. So that came uh, to an advantage. I'm um, really liking the way it looks. It has a nice textured look on the outside and the slick finish on the inside. Good practice is to spray something like a silicone detailer or something slick like WD-40, PAM, uh, Maxima SC1, which is what I use on the ATVs, uh, Honda Polish, something of a coating, like a slick coating, a silicone spray, uh, anything that to, to line the inside here. That way the snow does not stick um, any further, uh, which is a great idea if you want to prevent uh, anything from happening. So spray it down, spray down your auger housing as well, and uh, keep things from building up. But that there is the install of the shoot guard deflector uh, shield, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think I'm going to go with stray discharge uh, shoot deflector. So that's a, I think that's a, a suiting name for that. And I'm um, really liking just the sharp looks on this thing now because now it's black and it matches the machine well. It doesn't look out of place. It looks like it's a factory piece, which is what I was aiming for. So I'm really happy with the way it came out. And now it's just time to put it through the paces with some actual snow and slush and some heavy stuff. Um, hopefully we'll get some more snow here in New Hampshire. That way I can test this thing out. But this year so far has been very little snow. Um, I don't know why, but hopefully I'll get some more because uh, I really want to use this thing and try it out. But that's it right there, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and happy snow blowing. All right, guys, so that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you're interested in purchasing the upgraded shoot collar design that I showed you in this video, please send me an email down below, and uh, once I get a list of people ready to buy, I will go ahead and figure out a way how to make these in a higher volume and um, get them out to you guys so you can enjoy the benefits of... Um, the shoe collar improved design. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you have any more questions or comments, please place them right down below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please go ahead and do so. I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next video.